This is the Kemp Ridley sea turtle. One of the problems that we're having with the Kemp Ridley turtles along the coast here of Florida is fishing pressure. And on this one you can see that there is a fishing line caught in this turtle's mouth. The uh, a hook with this one, this particular one had a piece of shrimp. And what we're going to do now is remove the hook so the animal can be released back into the wild. What we're going to do now, because this hook is not deeply embedded, I'll be able to remove this myself. If it was a deeply embedded hook, if it had been further down into the uh, esophagus or even swallowed down into the gut, we would have to take this turtle to a vet. Sometimes what we do with a turtle like that is take it in and get an x-ray and we can watch the hook. I, I use a metal detector. We get an x-ray, see where the hook is in the body, follow the hook with a metal detector and over time, if it's a regular steel hook, it will rust away and the turtles will sometimes uh, excrete the hook. But if it's a stainless steel hook, it won't rust away and it has to be removed sometimes even surgically. But this one's in an easy spot to get to, so I can just open his mouth here, reach in here with a couple of forceps to the hook. Even move it as easy set as done. Give it a good twist. So we can get a hook out and uh, help save the lives of one of the most endangered sea turtles in the world. And now we're going to take the turtle inside and we'll put some flipper tags in. And those tags are used to identify this animal from any of the other turtles. Uh, one of the things that we would do is when we've tagged this turtle, I'm going to weigh it and we'll look it over, see if it's got any type of other identification on it. And uh, then this turtle will be ready for release. First thing I like to do is weigh the turtle. In order to get a good weight on the turtle, I have to have a way to restrain the turtle. And I like to use these rubber beads in. So I can put this on our, on our scale. Zero the scale in. And then place the turtle into the, uh, the bin so it's not going to thrash around. And it won't mess up the weight and it's also not going to injure the turtle. Lay it down in there. Very calm. This turtle weighs about 9.6 pounds, so that's a pretty good size for our area. We usually get them, they're going to weigh somewhere between 6 and 8 pounds. Now again, Kemp Ridley's are very calm. And if this were a little longer head, it would be jumping all around, biting at me. And Kemp Ridley's are easy to work with. They usually just lay here like this. I've cleaned some tags. These are the flipper tags. I like to take them inside. I wash them off really good, make sure there's no residual oil on them. And I clean them up with beta dime. It may not be necessary to do that, but I also like to wash the turtle slippers with a little bait of time before I, I put the tag. Load the tag into the pliers. Clean an area off here on the flipper. I'm not going to get this tag into the muscle. I'm going to put it into these scales on the top flipper here. Finally, that's where I like it. And you can see there's very little reaction from the turtles when we do this. And I always like to tell when I'm tagging a turtle here, if there are kids in that are doing a tour and they get to see a turtle being tagged, it's kind of like getting your ear pinched. You're going to get that little pinch of pain, and then it's not going to be too bad. Again, I like to put a little bit of beta dine on here. Some of these turtles that they released in Texas in different areas, they may have taken a plug of the shell and flipped it over and you'd have a little white spot, what they would call living tag. 
we don't scan them for the pit tag here. The state does not provide us with a pit tag scanner, so I'm going to look the turtle over. This one doesn't have a living tag, and the other thing I'm going to do is look for is any kind of damage to the animal. So when I pick it up and look it over, you can see. I'm going to look to see if any of the shell is damaged. There's not really any damage to the shell, but I do notice that this flipper, this back left flipper, is missing part of the toes. So I'm going to write this down on its tag, on its report, and I'll mark it. There's an area for me to mark a little diagram of a turtle. I can circle the area that I think is damaged. And that way, the next person that finds the turtle, if they look up these numbers, we may look at the animal's body and see if there's any other damage that has occurred since this turtle had been released from this facility. So kind of a fun thing. Here on the tip of this flipper, we can see that there's a notch taken out of the tip of the foot. So I'm going to mark these down on its, on its reporting farm so that everybody would know that those little damaged areas are there now. And then later on, if more damage occurs, somebody finds the turtle, we can get an idea of how it is surviving in the wild and what's kind of happening. This is a set of calipers that we use to measure our turtles with. I can open these calipers up, placing them over the turtle's shell, I can get a straight line length of how long this turtle is. The first measurement I'm going to take going to be a straight line carapace length, and we do two of those. I'm going to do the maximum length, which is going to be from the center of the shell on the front to the longest tip on either side of the notch. So I'm going to put my uh, calipers up here. I just want to get it in here to work. Longest length, and this little tip, the notch on this left hand margin of the shell is a little bit longer, and it is actually at 12 and one eighth inches. Oh wait a minute, reading it wrong. Thirteen and one eighth inches. What I'm going to do then is I'm going to take another length, and it's going to be a straight line length, the shortest straight line length from the from the uh, top of the shell to the notch. So we're going to record in there. Twelve point eight inches, and then I'm going to get the widest clip of the carapace. about 11.8, and we mark that on our paperwork. Okay, it's the next morning. Let's see if we can introduce our little uh, Pimp Ridley, see if it has something to eat. Normally placing a crab in the tank with one is just a meal that they're not able to refuse. Like this little fella is more than happy to take a blue strap. It's always good to see them take a meal. I always like to make sure that they're going to eat before we release them back in the wild.